Okay, guys, this is uh, Dr. Sean Ribbon Sean over at the Centered Path. Today, we're going to go over some issues and things to know about supernatural powers like walking on water and going through walls and flying and reading minds and stuff like that. In the guidance and uh, insight from the uh, from the Buddha, this is a book, a common Buddhist text. So it takes into account Vajrayana, Theravada, and Mahayana all together. So we're including all of those together. This is a compilation of things. Uh, it was published in 2017. There's not a lot of copies of it, but it's a really good book because it uses all three of them. Now, one of the things we see is that a lot of exoteric, which is like outlying Buddhism, or like Buddhism that's like very practical, pragmatic, or secular, I guess you'd say. And then there's like esoteric, where there's a lot of... Uh, esoteric secret trainings and stuff like that. And the Buddha was really specific about not teaching that way. Because if you had secrets, then that causes an us and them kind of thing. And there was there was, should be nothing like that. And so we're going to go over some of this. And we're talking about, um, <clears throat> there was a, a householder named Kivata. And when the Buddha was staying in a place called Nalanda, Kivata had come to him. And so that we started all these on one occasion, thus I heard, right? Kivata came to the Buddha and said, hey, if you want to really do well, why don't you do some miracles and show some miracles and do some, some cool and, and groovy things, okay? It says here, Venerable Sir, this Nalanda is rich, prosperous, populous, and full of people who have faith in the Blessed One. It would be well if the Blessed One to instruct a monk to perform superhuman wonders of psychic potency. In this way, the people of Nalanda would come to have more faith in the Blessed One. So being said, the Blessed One spoke to the householder. So the Buddha said to him, this isn't the way I teach. Okay, he says, this is not the way I teach the Dhamma to the monks. Saying, monks go and perform superhuman, superhuman wonders of psychic potency for the white white clothed lay people. So in, in India and in Sri Lanka, usually the, the lay people wear white. Okay. Kivada asked him once, he said, no, that's not what I do. He asked him twice, he says, that's not what I do. And they asked him a third time. Notice that's a that's a, a continuing theme we see in all of the teachings is everything is done in three. Because when you've done it three times, you've really thought about it. You could have said a mistake in the first response. Uh, the second response maybe was a little bit misconstrued. And the third response means you, you've not only had a conversation about it, but you've really decided and you've come up with the actual answer that you were going to stick by. This is why we do things like the refuge ceremony in three parts. We do, the, I, I, I take refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Dharma, I take refuge in the Sangha, but we say it a second time and a third time. So the Buddha talks to Kev, uh, uh, Kedavada and he says here, there are three kinds of wonder that I've declared having realized them by my own insight. So he sat and, and thought about them and contemplated them. Which three? They are the wonder of supernormal powers, the wonder of mind reading, and the wonder of instruction. Kivada, what is the wonder of supernormal powers? A monk that wields this kind of power, having been one that becomes many, many that becomes one, so he can be seen in many places, or seen only in one place, another place, for example. He appears and disappears. He goes unimpeded through walls, ramparts, and mountains as if through sky. He dives in and out of the earth as if it were water. He walks on the water as if it were the earth. Sitting cross-legged, he flies through the air like a winged bird. With his hand, he touches and strokes even the moon and the sun. So mighty and powerful, he exercises influence with his body, even as far as the Brahma worlds. That's that's very common uh, ideas is what the guru can do or what, what your teacher can do, right? Um, <clears throat> but that's not what we teach here. And someone has faith. Then someone who has faith and trust sees that a monk, sees that monk wield such varying kinds of supernatural supernormal powers that faithful and believing person tells this to someone who is skeptical and unbelieving and then unfaithful and unbelieving my person might say sir there is something called the gandhara charm it is by this means that the monk wields such miracles he exercises influence with his body even to the brahmana worlds the brahma worlds what do you think uh, kavada says the buddha um would not a skeptic say that to a believer Venerable sir, he would say thus, Kavada, that is why, seeing the danger of the world, the wonder of supernormal powers, I am disgusted with, ashamed of, and shun it. That's what the Buddha tells him. Kavada, what is the wonder of mind reading? There a monk reads the minds of other beings, of other people, reads their mental states, their thoughts and ponderings, and says, this is how your mind is, that is how it inclines, this is in your heart. That someone who has faith and thus sees him doing these sin, things, tells this to someone who is skeptical and unbelieving. 
And that unfaithful and unbelieving person might say, there is something called the manika charm. It is by this means that the monk can read the minds of others. Kavada, what do you think? said the Buddha. Would not a skeptic say that to the believer? Venerable sir, he would say thus. Kavada, that is why, seeing the danger of the wonder of mind reading, I am disgusted with, ashamed, and shun it. Kavada, what is the wonder of instruction? Kavada here gives a monk instruction as follows. Think this way, not that way. Attend in this way, not that way. Abandon this and abide at living on that. That is called the miracle of, of instruction. He goes on to, ex to describe uh, guiding a person up into attaining arhantship. So he doesn't want people to follow because he can fly through the air or that he can read minds or that he can walk through walls or be in many places at one time. That is not supposed to be the teaching. The teaching is how to, and it says right here, instruction, the monk gives instruction as follows. Think in this way, not in that way. Attend in this way, not in that way. Abandon this and abide having entered on that. That is called the miracle of instruction. So there we're talking about like they should be a coach, right? A monk should be a coach. They shouldn't be telling you that there's miracles and follow me for a miracle. They should be you can do it yourself. Now, if you really look at Buddhism and the Buddhist conversation, it's all about that. The locus of control, which means where everything comes from and karma too, because you're responsible for your own karma, comes from the self. There's the self, your actions, your reactions, and your understanding, right? So it's the three poisons and the three remedies, right? Aversion, uh, greed, and uh, pride, um, and ignorance, right? There's four, but there's three. There's three, right? And then so the 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 remedy for greed is is generosity and loving kindness. The the for anger and avarice is is also loving kindness and compassion. And then for ignorance is with development of prajna or wisdom. Now, wisdom is practical. It doesn't mean flying around. There's no magic. And, and looking too deep into the magic, we can get lost. And we expect magic. And then we have too much of a high hope for the teacher. And we will be disappointed by ourselves and by the teacher. Anyway, this is Ramesh We're just reading through this book a little bit, uh, trying to find, you know, different aspects to look through and talk about the different <clears throat> parts in here. Um... So he even has like, there's, there's really good stuff in here. I mean, this goes through each of the three different groups of Buddhism and it has in here, you know, the teaching of those sent to kill him, the teaching of fierce, uh, taming a fierce elephant, taming the murderous bandit, Angulimala, Angulimala, guy who had fingers as his, as his mala. Okay, overcoming a severe illness and teaching. Wow, this is really good stuff. We're going to go over it more and more, and I'll be posting more of this. i got to edit this one, though. Don't forget to subscribe, like, uh, and, and we'll continue with the teachings. If you have questions, let me know. Go on the Reddit. You can do those as well. Uh, I run one, uh, r slash beginning Buddhist, in case we can start getting the, the conversation started. You can find me on the other ones, too. It's Sitting Still 9, and that's where we'll be. This is Dr. Sean. Take care. Good, good luck, and uh, do your studies, and be nice, and don't look for miracles because just being here is a miracle. Bye.